boy, do we have a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to the World Juniors. Now, this is going to be one of maybe three videos on the day, going over a few of the things that we saw yesterday, a few of the guys that I liked, a few of the prospects, a few of the picks, and all that stuff. There are some very good stories, but... When it comes to probably the most fun one for me personally, let's go over a few Detroit Red Wings drafted prospects, guys that stood out to me yesterday, particularly we're going over the Sweden versus Russia game, as well as the Team Canada versus Czech Republic game, or excuse me, Czechia. that's what they're going to be referred to now, yes, Czechia. So we're not going over every single Red Wings guy that is at the tournament, we're going over a few of them here, mostly because of the performances that we had seen, and just some of the highlights, dude. Now, I watched a good chunk of all the games that were played yesterday, but obviously some guys stood out a lot more than others, which is kind of what this video is going to go over here today. So, let's start out in chronological order and go over the first game of the two that we are discussing, Sweden versus Russia. Now, the Wings had two prospects playing in this one, suiting up for Team Sweden. They were Simon Edvinson, who was the top pick out of the Red Wings organization in the 2021 NHL injury draft, as well as Theodore Niederbach. Now, Niederbach has been kind of on the up and up ever since he was drafted in the second round of the 2020 draft. He was never really seen as this top of the line guy, but as a C-lister kind of prospect with maybe middle six upside, there was a pretty notable formula here as to what made Theodore Niederbach such an attractive option for the Red Wings, especially in that second round spot too. Just going over the profiles right here. Edvinson, 18 years old, 6'5", 207, a left-handed defenseman who is smooth as the wind can be. Theodore Niederbach is 5'11", 172, a center right wing who is right-handed. He's 19 years old, and it's definitely time to go out there and start putting this guy on the map for all Red Wings fans to take a look at and witness. Because, yes, I know, when it comes to the top-of-the-line guys, Raymond, yeah, everybody knows about Raymond. Everybody knows about Simone Edvinson. Everybody knows about Sebastian Kosa, who also at the tournament, but uh, yeah, he's like the third string goalie, so it's not really the same over there for him. But when it comes to those other guys, Theodore Niederbach is giving himself a reason for us to cheer about him. And a lot of that came in tonight's game, or excuse me, not tonight's game, yesterday's game against Team Russia. Now, the Swedes got off to a really hot start in this hockey game. The first goal was scored five minutes into the first period. Oscar Olausen getting a very nice ripper on goal over there. But then you had yourselves a few other goals that the Swedes put up in the second period and then in the third. Oh, and by the way, yes, the goals were great. Love seeing the goals go out there, especially from the guys who scored them. But we are going to have to talk about the Russians and their goaltending as well. That's going to be the next video on the channel here because... Yeah, just stay tuned to the video. We're going to talk about that soon. But this game was great because the next goal scored to make it 2-0 for Team Sweden was won by Simon Edvinson himself. This was an absolutely brilliant play where Simon Edvinson takes the puck at the Swedish blue line. He chips it by the Russian defender and just breezes by everybody coming in on a breakaway. He fakes the backhand, goes forehand, shoves it five hole on Askarov, and he gets his first goal of the tournament. And this play was almost perfectly described by Craig Button because the second Simon Edvinson took the puck and he started going with it, you knew that nobody was going to go out there and catch this guy. He's just got such good wheels, such great mobility, and his skill set in this game was on display tenfold that even though he only had himself one goal, oh, look at that, he only has one goal in the tournament so far, he went out there with some really good plays, really good offensive shifts. He looked especially lanky in yesterday's game because when he goes out there and he skates, you could really see him get full use out of his strides and his arms, dude. He's going out there reaching for pucks and poking it away. He is so effective when it comes to using his limbs to their maximum capacity and distance, and as a guy who is 6'5", yeah, there's a lot of potential there. Not only did he score himself that goal, he also had himself, as we noted, a few other really nice plays in the offensive zone, cycling it around and getting some good offensive opportunities and whatnot, but he also scored himself an assist in the game as well. The final goal in the game in the last minute to make things 6-3 for Sweden was assisted by Simon Edvinson, so yeah, a goal and an assist in his first full-time World Juniors game, definitely not a bad start out to his career. Then you have yourselves Theodore Niederbach, who had himself a goal in this one as well. Niederbach is a guy who doesn't really have the same star power as an Edvinson does. Sure, they both play in the same hockey league. Sure, they both play in the same hockey team. But this season for Forlunda Hockey Club, Edvinson has 12 points in 24 games. Niederbach has 6 points in 28 games played. 
And you kind of know what happens in Frolunda when it comes to young teenagers, especially guys who are forwards going out there getting some playing time. It doesn't really happen the way that you would want it to. We very literally saw the same story yesteryear with Lucas Raymond and the way that he was being deployed by the Frolunda Hockey Club. And now Theodore Niederbach is kind of exhibiting the same struggles. So, yeah, the point production, who really cares? Just watch this guy at the World Junior, see what he does. Niederbach's goal was pretty good too. This one was actually Simone Edvinson who gets the puck out of the Swedish zone. It bounces around in the neutral zone a little bit off of the Russian guy over there, and Swedish forward Daniel Torgerson gets himself a little touch in it as well. It drops over for Niederbach who takes it in, he shoots it, he scores it, it's five hole on the goalie right here. And even though Edvinson was not credited with an assist, he pretty much deserved an assist here as he was kind of the only reason the play even got done the way it was done. So Edvinson, in spirit, he has himself three points points in this game. In reality, he's got two. Niederbach has himself a really nice goal on the rush, so you'll love to see that over there. But we're going to focus also on the Canada versus Czechia game that happened a little bit later into the night. Now, sure, both of these teams have Red Wings prospects. Canada has Sebastian Kosa, as we noted, he's not really playing. And then for Czechia, you had yourselves Jan Bednar, who wasn't playing, thankfully, as the Canadians ended up smoking Czechia in this game. But... Team Canada also had themselves another guy in this lineup that was part of the Red Wings system, Donovan Sobrango. He's 6'1", 194, 19 years old, taken by the Wings in the third round of the 2020 NHL entry draft. Now, Sobrango is really interesting because he was a prospect taken out of the OHL. Now, because the OHL stopped in 2020, 2021, he made his way over to the second tier Slovakian league, as well as playing some time in the Grand Rapids Griffin system. This year, he is a full-time Grand Rapids Griffin again, and in the 51 games that he has played, in the AHL, he has had a total of zero goals and seven assists, which, in my opinion, isn't really all that bad, considering he's 18, 19, turning 20 years old, so, I mean, come on, you don't really see teenagers go out there and do extraordinarily well in the AHL, because they usually never get that opportunity to do so in the first place, so... Sobrango, just at the very least being there and sticking around, to me, that's good enough to see. And it's why he went out there and started up for Team Canada, and he was a part of that really good comeback that the Canadians ended up pulling off. And the reason I say that is because it was a 3-1 to one lead for Czechia at one point. Mason McTavish scored the opening goal four minutes into the first, but then three straight Team Czechia goals. Owen Power got another one after to make it 3-2, to two, and then tying things up was a Connor Bedard rush that threw itself back over to Cole Perfetti, on the far side, he backhands one right through the crease. Nobody is there on the trailing defenseman, Donovan Sobrango, who comes in, he shoots it, he scores it. It's a tie game with 29 seconds left in the first period. And boy, oh boy, what a first period that was. Six to three is the final score as the Canadians get more goals from Owen Power and Olin Zellweger. And Donovan Sobrango pretty much scores the first goal that this guy has had in like, what? A year? It's the first goal that he has scored on North American ice in two years because he last played for Kitchener in 2019-20, and he scored six goals there. But Donovan Sobrango has had his second goal scored in the span of, what, from 2020-2021 to December 26-2021, just over a calendar year, so... Yeah, even though he doesn't really produce all too many points nowadays because he's playing in the AHL, as we noted, just seeing him go out there, do what he did, and actually play the solid role that he had, it was good enough. Now, he hasn't had the best tournament so far. Even in the preliminary game against Team Russia, there was a goal that bounced off of his skate. It was a really ugly one, and it's definitely one that you don't want to see ever go in for a guy, but... Just seeing the rebound over here. Beautiful plays by Connor Bedard and Cole Perfetti lead to the first of many, hopefully, Donovan Sobrango goals here in the World Juniors 2022. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the Sweden versus Russia game as well as Canada versus Czechia? What were your thoughts about Theodore Niederbach, Simon Edvinson, as well as Donovan Sobrango? Do you see these guys going out there playing significant roles for their teams? If so, can we get some predictions for points out there in the comment section below? They're certainly going to be fun to look at over there, but also talk to me in the comments. What do you think about their projections into the long-term future? Do you see these guys making the wings one day? Do you see them playing significant roles with Detroit? If not, what do you think they max out as? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about these players. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.